Today is April 17th, Monday, 2023, and I am in Houston, Texas on Fondren Road at the library, the public library. Last night and this morning, I had some visions and dreams about this white male and his mother, Cynthia O'Vara. I was sleeping behind a church, pregnant outside, called Brazewood Church here in Houston, Texas. I was forced to sleep behind the church because Cynthia O'Vara has Ku Klux Klan members swarming around me on Fondren Road here in Houston, Texas, where they forced me to sleep pregnant at the bus stops for the Ku Klux Klan and Cynthia O'Vara out of an apartment complex called The Willows here on Fondren Road for telling that Cynthia O'Vara told me that she was raping my child to death with Austin Metter. And this is Austin Metter, my ch- my child's father, and I'm pregnant by him. So I fell asleep last night at the church behind the church on a blanket. And I recall seeing Austin Metter or a white male that looked like it could have been him. And he had on a gray suit. And my spirit got very stirred up. And there were spirits or some sort of spirits it looked like coming in and out of him. And it looked like uh, it had something to do with the Ku Klux Klan. And I started speaking through the Holy Spirit in the vision. And I said, Cynthia O'Vara. I started to say her name. And I said, Cynthia O'Vara is Austin Metter's mother. But I was saying it as if I were afraid. And I was saying, Cynthia O'Vara is Austin Metter's mother. And then... I started to say Cynthia O'Vara, but my my speech started to uh, be affected by some sort of evil that was from Cynthia O'Vara because Cynthia O'Vara is evil, saying that she was gang raping my child to death, saying that she is a witch. So Cynthia O'Vara stole my child. So in the spirit, I was saying, Cynthia O'Vara is a white woman. And I said something about, I believe I tried to say something about her raping my child or stealing my child. But because of all of the, I believe, the wickedness, the spirits, the demons, the Ku Klux Klan members... I just had to call on Jesus. And I said, Lord Jesus, because she stole my son, Melbourne Metter. And she was saying that they were gang raping him to death. And she's having people set me up to sleep behind a church. Or they're trying to attack me, swarming around me when I was sleeping at the bus stop. So I woke up and they have been staging these black males around me to uh, come around me. And I recall when I woke up, when I said Cindy is a white woman, it was like the Holy Spirit was saying that there was a reason to mention that she was a white woman that she was evil and that she has all of these people staging me outside and she's a white woman but I also heard uh the the why well, I felt the Holy Spirit telling me like because offset there's a rapper being mentioned on my channel there were black men that she said she was allowing the gang rape my child 
there are blacks and celebrities that are being involved with allowing them to set me up outside to try to cover up that they were saying they were raping my child. So they're trying to do that to try to say that I don't have any uh, custody or rights to my child while they said they were raping him to death. So I recall the Holy Spirit clearing up that it's a white woman, that she's the main one that is responsible for raping my child. So everybody is allowing me to be set up for a white woman named Cynthia Overa, and I believe that that's why God wanted to clear that up so people would know that um, it's a lot of other people that's selling me out about them raping my child and that were involved with them raping my child, but they're all doing it for a white woman. And that'll let people understand why would everybody be setting up this one black woman because she's white. I believe that the Holy Spirit wanted me to put emphasis on the fact that she was Austin Metter's mother because she's a child molester. She's in the Ku Klux Klan. She's a grand witch. And she's a murderer. So when you're dealing with someone like that and she's his mother, she's mad because I shot Austin in the leg in self-defense. So being that she's thinking that she's some mob boss to run around with white males that are KKK and having them coming after me to try to murder me, she was saying she was letting them rape my child to death in her custody. And then she's his mother. So the Holy Spirit was putting emphasis on the fact that if she's that wicked and he was attacking Andrea, Andrea shot him in self-defense. She's over here having everybody in Houston, Texas staging me outside and trying to cover up that they were raping my child. So when I woke up, they had a black male uh, over there, but he had he had been right there when I fell asleep. But he was a different black male than the male that was over there the first night. So he was like, oh, I heard you say something about your child. Uh, Don't take my child. Uh, And he was like, uh, started trying to talk to me about God. And uh, he heard me. uh, He was like, oh, something wrong with you saying stuff like that out of your sleep. And I was like, well, I called on Lord Jesus, so he's going to handle it. So I went back to sleep, and I remember a black male told me he started speaking with me in the spirit, and he was like, what the plan is is for them to have us come around you or have you in a location and then they trying to get us to get something on you they can try to discredit you as a mother so i believe the male was talking about uh they're trying to have them come around with uh drugs or trying to have them come around and force me to have sex. And then they're trying to make it seem like I'm a prostitute or a drug addict. But the black male was telling me that that's what they are plotting on, is to try to have black males come around and try to to find a way to discredit me as a mother. So I recall Austin Metter coming to me in the spirit after that and he tried to slap my phone out of my hand because I was about to tell the date that Cynthia O'Fara and Austin Metter told me that they started raping my child, my little boy Melbourne Metter. And I've been telling about it for years on social media trying to obtain custody from them as they have been staging me outside from uh, Texas, Conroe, Texas, and Houston, Texas. They also did that to me in Atlanta, Georgia, so they're trying to do it to me anywhere that I go in the country. But I will tell the date again. I shot Austin Metter September 18, 2018, and I was in the Montgomery County Jail it was self-defense, and there was a witness. There were 911 calls, and he had just got out of prison for assault. So he had assaulted me in my home, and I ran out of the home with my child, Melbourne Metter. 
and I was pregnant with a baby that I'm still carrying. So they have been abusing my pregnancy with the Ku Klux Klan this entire time while they were saying that they were raping my child to death and the baby is still alive in me. So they're trying to starve me, leaving me walking around the area with the baby alive in me and trying to discredit me as a mother about Cynthia Overe and Austin Meadow raping my child. My son was 22 months old the day that I shot Austin Meadow in self-defense a block from my home where I had gone into a restaurant asking for help and he came in there assaulting us inside of the restaurant in front of a witness that had dialed 911. So they brought me into the Montgomery County Jail and charged me. I have since had the charges dropped, but the date that they charged me was September 18, 2018. And Cynthia Overa said that she started raping my child right then. Uh, that She took him home and she said she started raping him with her husband, Joe Overa and he was 22 months old. So Austin Mitter tried to slap the phone out of my hand in the spirit because he was, I don't know if he was ashamed, but it was like as soon as I was about to say the date again, he just like hurried and tried to slap the phone out of my hand. And then three months later, they had been lying about the 911 calls, the witness, the witness reports and about his criminal history up until January 2019. And there was an investigator in Conroe, Texas, named Sheriff Jim McDougal, that was working for my lawyer, Inger Chandler, to help me get the charges dropped. And Jim McDougal told me that he had interviewed the witness at the restaurant and the witness, uh, he said I had a good witness and that it should not need to go to trial. It did not go to trial and the charges were dropped. But that month, January 2019, after Sheriff Jim McDougal told me that he had found out that I was protecting myself, that's when Austin Metter told me that he was gang raping my child to death with the Ku Klux Klan and my son was two years old. They said that Austin Metter had been in the hospital uh, the shooting happened in September, but they say he got out of the hospital, I believe, in October. And by November, December, by January 2019, they told me that he had been raping my son with the KKK here in Texas, in Conroe, Texas, with his mom. And that's what I was about to say was that they said that they were gang raping him, that they had been raping him from January 2019. He was only two years old, and then he slapped the phone, trying to slap the phone out of my hand because I'm recording these videos on my phone on a video app. Then I heard the Holy Spirit say something about, I have not seen my son since 2019. So I saw a picture of my son in 2019. So in January 2019, um, but I just want to let y'all know I'm recording this video in the Houston Public Library and a white male just came back here. Uh, he's looking at books and stuff, but they're all Ku Klux Klan and this is what Cynthia Vera has them doing around me. So if he does not move away from the books while I continue to speak, then I'm going to step outside. Okay, so I just came outside of the library. The white male is a young white male. He was dressed like he was a Jew, but they are Ku Klux Klan members. And there was a private area in the back of the library where I was speaking. And he came back there and he's looking at books, but trying to listen as I'm telling about them trying to all cover up raping my child because they are white. So in January 2019, that's when Sheriff Jim McDougal told me that it wouldn't have to go to trial. And they told me that they were raping my child to death. I was still inside of the jail and Austin Metter and Cynthia had a whale come up to the jail and serve me with papers. 
saying that they wanted to take me to family court to sue me for custody of my child while I was still inside of the jail fighting the charges for shooting him. They were trying to murder me in the back of the jail through poisoning and starvation. They brought me into a family court named uh, 418th District with Judge Trace Gilbert as the judge. And they had Austin Metter uh, and Cynthia Overa lie about Austin Metter abusing me. And I was forced to represent myself by my lawyer, Inga Chandler, saying that she would not be able to represent me in family court, but only in criminal court. After Inga Chandler told me that she was allowing Austin Metter and Cynthia Overa to gang rape my child to death with the Ku Klux Klan in January 2019. My lawyer was also in medical care, saying that I was not pregnant and abusing me in the back of the Montgomery County. I was forced to cross-examine Austin Metter and Cynthia Overa, and I won against them. But Tracy Gilbert, the judge, the white male judge, he told me that I would not be able to get custody of my child from them until I was released on the charges. I had already told Child Protective Services about the child molestation. I told them that I believed that he was molesting them, him before they told me that they were raping him. And then they decided that they wanted to rape him to death because I was afraid that he was already doing it and they were being racist. My pregnancy was confirmed by a nurse with a Doppler machine named Charge Nurse Michelle, but the Ku Klux Klan made the local hospital lie about the pregnancy at Conroe Regional Hospital and transport me back to the Montgomery County Jail where they were care and trying to set me and the baby up to be murdered in a segregated housing unit. I was released on all of the charges thanks to Jesus Christ. He represented me with 19 911 calls and witness statements. Uh, my testimony, main testimony, but he got me out on the charges. My lawyer was there August 22nd, 2019, and we presented 19 911 calls to the district attorney, and they were trying to ask me if I would take time served, but God said that I was not guilty and that I would be willing to go ahead and take it to trial. The trial was set September 3rd, 2019, but they dropped the charges at the pretrial uh, at the docket call on August 22nd, 2019. And when I was released, I did not have anywhere to go because they held me so long until I lost my apartment where Austin Metter had been assaulting me, running me from my home with my little boy in my arms who was 22 months old. So I lived in that apartment for two or three years and Austin had been serving a prison sentence for assault since my child was a newborn. And he had been violent with us before he went to prison. So when he got out of the prison, he was abusing us again. And he ran me from my home after he had been abusing us for about eight weeks since his release from a, uh, a Texas prison. They forced me to walk the streets of Conroe, Texas with the baby still alive in me. And they had my family refuse to allow me to stay in their home. Uh, there was a family member that said that she was allowing them to rape my little boy and refusing to bomb me out. Her name is Shakina Jones, and she refused to allow me to stay in her home to try to get custody of my child from them. And the blacks in Conroe, Texas, refused to allow me to stay with them. The blacks in Conroe, Texas, were involved with saying that they were raping my child with them. Uh, through the Black Freemason Brotherhood and gangs. So they were trying to run me out of the city of Conroe without actually being able to obtain custody of my child because they said that they were raping him. 
they forced me to go with black males from my sister Shakina's home where I tried to stay with her until the custody hearing. There was a custody hearing in December 19, 2019, December 2019, where I was trying to get Cynthia Overa and Austin Better to return my little boy to me. And my sister put me out of her home before the custody hearing, and they forced me to go with a black male named Jakiba. And he had charges, and he was trying to set me up, which is what the black male was telling me in the spirit, that they had drugs in the home, and uh, they told me that they would allow me a room, uh, and they did not give me a room, saying that they could not do that. And they tried to stop me from making it to the custody hearing, and I was forced to be homeless in Conroe, Texas, in order to go to the custody hearing. They had trafficked me all the way to uh, Anahuac, Texas, and tried to hold me there with guns to my head and stop me from making it to the custody hearing. I made it to the custody hearing, homeless, pregnant, and starved with the baby alive in me, December 2019. And I had a witness with me, uh, Jakiba, but his friend Travis had pulled a gun on me inside of the residence. And they um, reset the custody hearing so that there would not be any witnesses inside of Tracy Gilbert's courtroom when we were going over the case for them to return my child. And they staged me as homeless the day of the custody hearing from Reverend Stewart's home. So he reset the court date uh, because he did not, they didn't want any witnesses inside of the court date to hear my side of the story for them to return my child. And Jakiba forced me out of his home and they sent me to uh, Reverend Stewart's home in Conroe, Texas. And Reverend Stewart forced me out of his home after they said that they would not return my child to me. Uh, it was just me, Cynthia Overa, and the judge, and one white woman in the courtroom as I told that I was released on the charges that Austin Metter was abusing me that Cynthia Overa knew that I was a great mom and that I wanted them to return my child to me. And he said that Cynthia Overa can keep your child. And then at 2019, December 2019, I met a black male named Colin online and he said that he would rent me a room in his two bedroom home. And he was doing the same operations to try to discredit me as a mother. And I had called Cynthia Overa after the custody hearing. And I asked Cynthia Overa if I could speak with my son. And Cynthia Overa put him on the phone and I spoke with him. He sounded very sad. And he said, I love you. And I told him that I loved him, too. And I recall Cynthia sending me a video and a picture of my son. He was smiling and he was three years old. I recall she, she sent me a video of him driving around in a little car around her house. And that was the last time that I saw my son was in December 2019. Then Colin staged me to be forced out of his home in, in the beginning of January 2020. And they starved me and they raped me the entire year of 2020. And I started a YouTube channel in October 2020 telling about Cynthia Overa, uh and them trying to kill the baby that was still alive in me. They denied me medical care in four hospitals and they tried to kill the baby in me at St. Luke's Hospital here in Houston, Texas. So I was uh, lured to Little Rock, Arkansas by a family member named Barbara Thomas uh, in it was probably December 2020 and January 2021 around that time because I started posting Austin Metters mugshot on my YouTube channels. My family had been watching my YouTube channels, but they had been trying to set me up to be murdered with the Ku Klux Klan saying that they were blood sacrificing me and my kids to the Illuminati because Austin was white. So they were allowing them to abuse me outside in the cold and starve me pregnant outside in the cold, trying to cover up that I was pregnant and that they said they were raping my child. 
So when they saw that I started posting that they were allowing the country people to abuse me in Texas for a white male, they tried to lure me out of the state. So my Aunt Barbara said that she knew that he had been abusing me. And I went to Arkansas and she tried to uh, stop me from really having the food and she tried to stop me from putting out the videos of pictures of me and my son and telling about my case. And she put me out of her home in the middle of Arkansas after about two or three days at her home. And I had to get a Greyhound ticket to Atlanta, Georgia. I purchased a fetal heart monitor in Atlanta, Georgia. And I started posting the baby's heartbeat that was still alive in me from the jail. Uh, and inside of a Salvation Army in Atlanta, Georgia, and they had the staff members try to attack me with Atlanta police and force me out of the shelter. Then they tried to starve my pregnancy and tried to discredit me on the streets by trying to have males come around me with drugs and have them raping me uh, so that they could try to say that I was a prostitute. So I am back inside of the library. The white male, um, he that was inside the library, um, back here by me while I was speaking, he walked out and got inside of a car and left. And the staff started coming around the building where I was standing and it made me uncomfortable. So I just came back inside. So they were starving me outside in Atlanta with Atlanta police from city to city in Atlanta, Georgia. And they forced me to go with black males that were trying to starve me and rape me until they thought that the baby would be dead. And the baby survived. And God told me to come back to Houston, Texas, to go to Cynthia's home in Magnolia, Texas, to see if my little boy was alive in her custody. So I went to, okay, I think, okay, I'm just saying I got staff walking around and there's so many people trying to set me up. So I went to uh, get on the Greyhound. I came back to Houston, Texas, and they had the blacks here in Houston, Texas, and blacks following me on the Greyhound from New Orleans involved with trying to set me up on the streets here in Houston, Texas, to try to attack me and try to make me out to be a prostitute with racist police. So I ended up walking 18 miles to Cynthia Vera's, uh, her, to the city uh, where she lives uh, right outside of uh, Magnolia, Texas. I was in Spring, Texas. And she had people threatening me on my channel um, as I was releasing information about her, about going to her home to see if my son was alive in her custody still. And Cynthia Overa was having them get on my channel and say that she had a restraining order because I had been telling that they said that they were raping my child. And I was crying and screaming about it. So... I had called HPD several times. I called Child Protective Services several times. And they just had people do operations with gangs around me uh, because they think that it was okay for her to rape him, to have them setting me up outside to make it seem like I can't legally have custody of my son. So they had the civilians involved in Spring, Texas, to call police on me as I was releasing videos about her raping my little boy in, in Spring, Texas, which was right outside the city limits where they were claiming that I could not come on her street uh, to see if my little boy was alive at her home or that I would be arrested. So I had sent them to do wellness checks and they were refusing to put my son on the phone. They were refusing to send me any videos of my son to confirm that he was alive or to do FaceTime. And they were lying and saying that she never said that she raped him when I was giving the police reports. 
she said that she was raping him with police. So the Montgomery County Police and the Conroe Police from Conroe, Texas and Magnolia, Texas, are helping her to cover up that they all said that they were raping my little boy for racism while in Cynthia Overa's so-called custody. So there was an officer that claimed he wanted to take me to a women's shelter as I had been telling about them staging me on the streets so that they could rape him. Then I went to this women's shelters and they were helping the Ku Klux Klan uh, poison me to try to cover up my pregnancy. And then they were helping them to try to cover up raping my child by, by staging me out of that women's shelter in Conroe, Texas, which was the city where the shooting happened. And then th they had the Ku Klux Klan surrounding me in Conroe, Texas, and trying to set me up to be murdered out of the Salvation Army in Conroe, Texas. And they erased one of my channels off of YouTube and tried to starve me pregnant outside and cover up that they said that they were raping my child to death with celebrities offset from the group Migos and Cardi B, Beyonce, Jay-Z, uh, Janae Aiko, all of these different celebrities that knew that I had been telling the information on social media were now involved with the Illuminati staging me outside for 2022 to try to cover up that they said that they had been raping my little boy. Someone told me that he was still alive and that he could not speak because Austin was allowing everybody to sexually abuse him. And then... The Holy Spirit said that there was a time frame where people could have helped save him if they would have listened to me and went and got him from Cynthia Overa's custody, from Cynthia Overa. So they left me in Conroe, Texas, on the streets from the shelters. And I got job, two jobs and they had my jobs trying to abuse me and give me too much work trying to harm the baby that I'm carrying. And then they were allowing the Ku Klux Klan to line up around the store and try to do operations on me while I was working. When I received my paychecks, they had everybody in the city of Conroe, Texas, tell me that they would refuse me a residence in the city so that I could not go to Tracy Gilbert in Conroe, Texas for 18th Court District in the Montgomery County Courthouse to ask him to have Cynthia Overa and Austin Better return my child to me alive so that I could continue to take care of him at my new residence in Conroe, Texas. I was forced to come to Houston to try to get in programs that would help me to get an apartment where I could go back to Carmel, Texas and ask for Tracy Gilbert to have Cynthia Overa and Austin Miller return my son to me. And they immediately refused me into all of the women's shelters here in Houston, Texas that were public and they were trying to harm my baby um, in the shelters or they were refusing us. So they were trying to cover up Cynthia Overa raping my child with the entire city, with civilians and businesses. And they were starving me pregnant, forcing me to sleep at bus stops. And they had celebrities join in, the same celebrities that I mentioned to try to help them and let them cover up rape of my little boy and to try to help them cover up that I am pregnant. So I remained in that condition until December 2022. I had gotten a job in January 2023 and they had my job refused me any hours on my schedule so that they could stop me from living in a motel room where I was telling about them abusing the baby and raping my little boy, saying that they had raped him to death. They forced me to go with black males 
and the black males were trying to discredit me. I'm going to have to step outside again if the staff member does not remove himself from me in the back of the library. He is an older white male, and he's back here like he's putting books on these shelves. I'm going to give him a second. Okay, he's removing himself. So they had me go with black males this year that were trying to starve me. I have been releasing the videos of the baby alive kicking inside of me on the videos all last all last year in 2022 and in 2021. I have been releasing videos about the baby still being alive and also in 2020. So God told me that I have a multi-million dollar lawsuit about my pregnancy and that I will receive a multi-million dollar settlement. They had black males starving me and trying to rape me and give me drugs to try to cover up my pregnancy and to try to discredit me as a mother about Cynthia Overa and Austin Metter raping my little boy, Melbourne Metter. It is now April 2023. And they just staged me from the Willows apartments where they had a black male lure me. And he was starving me with another black male inside of the apartment. And they have me now walking around on, on Fondren Road in Houston, Texas with the baby alive in me, forcing me to beg them for food. And they are refusing to give us small do donations for food. You can see the baby alive in me kick in on my videos from this year. And they are trying to help them to cover up the pregnancy. And they have them coming up to me and asking, will I come with them? And I'm telling them no. And they are telling me that they have drugs and that they have alcohol. And they're having them continuously coming up to me doing this. And they are swarming around me in thousands of cars trying to stop me from winning the multi-million dollar settlement. I also had a dream last night and this morning about a baby. I was in a room with black women and there was a baby on the bed. And it was the baby that I'm carrying. I believe it was the baby that I'm carrying. It looked identical to my son. Austin Metter is the father of the baby that I'm carrying from the jail. I took the shirt that I had been wearing and I folded it and I put it over the baby as a blanket. I had prayed to God and asked God to give me some hope for the baby and I believe that that was the hope. So... I just came from walking around. They have me walking around with a red blanket and a bag. And they are trying to starve my baby bump to try to stop it from showing. But the baby is alive. It's kicking. The hands are touching me. And they are trying to ruin my image. They stole hygiene uh, and beauty products, cosmetic products, hair products from me inside of the Willows Apartments. They have all of the black people on Fondra Road trying to set me up with the Ku Klux Klan here in Houston, Texas. And I may leave this area and go to another area, uh, but I frequent West Timer Road in Houston, Texas as well. Um, but Fondren, they just brought me over here and they tried to starve us for the Ku Klux Klan and they left me outside. So I believe that Austin Metter is finally in trouble for raping my little boy. And I believe that his mother is also in trouble for raping my little boy. And the baby is still alive in me from the jail. The blacks in the area are trying to persecute me outside with the Ku Klux Klan out of all of these apartment complexes here on Fondren Road here in Houston, Texas by Fondren and West Belford. 
and Fondren and Portal Drive because I am about to receive a multi-million dollar settlement about the baby that I am carrying. These blacks want to set me up to be murdered to try to stop people from helping to get the baby out of me.